So that means you turn from lying, stealing, fornication, blasphemy, homosexuality, anything you see in the Bible that God says is morally wrong. Is this making sense? Atheists are beginning to deny the reality of science. You find atheists saying, no, no, the universe didn't have a beginning, it's been there forever. No. They say the DNA is not a code, there's no genetic code, it's not a real code. Wrong. Do you think there's an afterlife? Do you think there's an afterlife? Yes. And what about you? I think, yes, energy transforms. Do you believe in God's existence? In my own way. I don't go to church or mass, but I think that he's here to teach us to do good. Got a question for you. Where do you think conscience comes from? Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's very deep for this time yeah, of the energy, morning. But I, energy, the um, science. You always obey your conscience? 99.9% .9 of the times, yes. I think it comes from, from God and what you believe in. That's where conscience comes from. So God gave you a conscience? I think so. Why? because we're here to do something good, not to do something bad. Conscience can be dulled. It's like taking the batteries out of a smoke detector. It doesn't alarm you if you do that. And some people dull their conscience so it doesn't speak to them. Right. Is there an objective moral standard that you can go by in life? I'm trying to point to the 10 commandments. Yeah. Yeah. So how many commandments can you name? Don't steal, don't kill. Eh, no robar. No robar. Uh... <laughs> I have a command in life which is don't do, don't do what you don't want people to do to you. Yeah, that's the golden rule. Right. And so Jesus used in the Sermon on the right. Mount, which is the essence of love. Right. Okay, let's go through the commandments and see how you're going to do on Judgment Day. Can you be honest with me? I'm going to be honest. Can you? I'm going to be honest. Do you think you're a good person? I think so. And what about you? Good person? Yeah, I'm a good person. How many lies have you told in your life? Countless. Have you ever stolen something? Very, very few times. I was a kid. <laughs> have you ever used God's name in vain? That's the third commandment. Yes, very few times, but yes. Maybe, I, I don't remember. Yeah. But you have used I... it twice since I met you. <laughs> Maybe, yes. Do you love your mum? I love her to death. And what about you? Do you love your mum? Yeah, I okay. really love her. So you'd never you? use your mum's name as a cuss word. That'd be disrespectful. Right. But you've taken the name of the God that gave you a mother and used it in the place of that filth word to express disgust. That's called blasphemy, very serious in God's eyes. I appreciate your patience with me. Appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the reflection. Jesus said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? No. When did you last look at pornography? Seven months since I met him. That's, that's lust. <laughs> okay. 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 So, so guys, months. I'm not judging you, but you've told me that you're lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterous at heart, and this yeah. is where we're going with this. If God judges you by those commandments on Judgment Day, you're going to be innocent or guilty. I think we will be... Um, judged by not only those things, but as a general of what we've done in life. You mean good things as well? Right. Try that in a court of law. If you've committed a serious crime, like you've robbed a bank, shot a guard, and he died, and the judge says you're guilty, and you say, yes, judge, I am guilty, but I want to tell you about all the good things I've, I've done. Yeah. The judge is going to say, what are you talking about? I'm not totally. here to judge you on the good things. Totally, I agree. He but just judges you on the crimes. That's how justice works, and exactly the same with God. On judgment day, will he be innocent or guilty of breaking those commandments? I think I'm going to be innocent. You'd be guilty like the rest of us. Lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. Right, so what am I supposed to do now? If you're guilty, will you go to heaven or hell? If I'm guilty, I go to hell, right? The Bible says all liars live their part in the lake right. of fire. No thief, no blasphemer, no okay. adulterer. So what do I do now? <laughs> okay, so this is where... The, it, you may think it's funny that you're going to hell, but it horrifies me. I love you, I care about you. I thought I was a better person. Yeah, well, the commandments show us we're not. They reflect what we are in truth. Right. Do you know what death actually is, according to the Bible? It's wages. Right, yeah. Did you know that? Death is wages, according Wa to the Bible? Wages. Wages are salary. Yeah. Yeah, it says the wages of sin is death. In other words, God is paying you in death for your sins. Like a judge looks mm. at a criminal that's murdered three girls. He says, we're going to pay you in the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what's due to you. This is what you've earned. Mm. And sin is so serious to a holy God that he's given you the death sentence, the soul that sins shall die. Nicholas, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? He did something wonderful. Uh, Forgive. Forgiveness? No. You actually know it, but you don't understand it. Shall I tell you? Please. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of the oh, world. Oh, yeah, right. Now, you know that. Right. But this will change everything for both of you if you can get a grip of this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. Right. 
That's what happened on that cross. That's why he said it is finished. Nicholas, if you're in court and someone pays your speeding fines, a judge can legally let you go, even though you're guilty. Yeah. You can say, you're guilty, but someone's paid these fines, you're out of here. Yeah. Now, God can let you go. He can let you live forever. He can take the death sentence off you, all because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood and then rose from the dead and defeated death. Right. And all you have to do to find everlasting life is repent of your sins. It's more than confession. It's when you actually turn from sin and trust in Jesus like you trust a parachute. Good. If you're on a plane 10,000 feet up, why would you put on a parachute? Save my life. If I have to save to your life. <laughs> and your motivation would be fear. Right. And that it's fear is your friend, not your enemy. It's doing good to you. It's driving you to the parachute. And Nicholas, I've tried to put the fear of God in both of you because the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom according to the Bible. And that fear is your friend, not your enemy, because it'll drive you to the foot of the cross where you can find everlasting life. Good. Now, do you know what repentance is? Repentance? No. Well, it's where you turn from all sin. It's something you continually do. I'm a Christian and I don't lie. I don't steal. I don't fornicate. I don't commit adultery. It's something I don't do because I don't want to play the hypocrite and just deceive myself. So you've got to be genuine in your repentance. So that means you turn from lying, stealing, fornication, blasphemy, homosexuality, anything you see in the Bible that God says is morally wrong. Is this making sense? Yes, but I don't agree with 100%. <laughs> well, what you've got to do is just go to the scriptures and say, God, do you, did you really say this, that adultery and fornication and lying and stealing and homosexuality are morally wrong in your eyes? If he did, then turn from it because your life is at stake. This is what the scriptures say. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals will inherit the kingdom of God. And because I love you, I've got to tell you that. So think about what we talked about. Will I'll you do that? About it. Think about it seriously. I'll think about it seriously. You think about it today? Yeah, think about it. Okay. And think about it with a sense of sobriety because you don't know when you're going to die. Totally. And we're talking about your life, your most precious life. Can I give you a gift? Go ahead. This is a book that I wrote. Okay. How okay. to be free from the fear of death. Do you think you'll read that? I think I'll read it. That's the Gospel of John. Okay, okay good. <laughs> Two five dollar in and out cards. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my, is that what you said? Oh, sorry. <laughs> nice to meet you guys. Thank you, Jen. Nice thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. These are not scientists necessarily, but they're atheists who think they, they are he seeing this from various people. And the reason they're attacking scientific facts, because they, they are, is because the scientific facts are pointing more and more to what they don't want to accept, which is that this world has a creator. And everything we see is, a, is part of the creation, including ourselves. So if you are being told that you have to choose between science and your Christian faith, reject that. Whoever told you that is wrong. It's not true. What's true is Christianity.